This is a mystery case of a CD5 negative small B cell lymphoma. And this is presented by Dr. Adam Bagg, who is a professor of pathology at the University of Pennsylvania. This um, is a needle core biopsy of an abdominal lymph node from a 65 year old gentleman. But before we got the H&E specimen, uh, about uh, 24 hours after the biopsy was performed, we received flow cytometry of, and so we had those flow results prior to obtaining the uh, histology. And so it's worth looking at that first so you can see how our workup of this case evolved in real time. So, so this um, shows the basic flow panel that was run. It was the top left hand panel, CD45 by side scatter, shows a fairly homogeneous population of lymphocytes and moving to the right on the top row still, you can see we have colored the B cells uh, detected by CD19 in red and the T cells uh, CD5 in green. And there's a, a significant shift towards B cells with about 90% of the lymphocytes being CD19 positive B cells and about 10% being CD5 positive T cells. This middle panel of course also shows us that the B cells are CD5 negative and when you move to the right hand side uh, of the top row you'll see too that these CD19 positive B cells do not co-express CD10. Importantly then looking at the lower row on the left hand side you clearly see that the B cells are almost exclusively surface kappa restricted indicating that this is number one a B cell neoplasm and number two that this is a B cell neoplasm that's not declaring what it might be in that it is CD5 negative and CD10 negative leaving a differential diagnosis of the small CD5 negative CD10 negative B cell neoplasm something along the lines of perhaps a marginal zone lymphoma or a lymphoplasmocytic lymphoma so this is where we began with the uh, histology and um, um, under this power it seems as if there is no recognizable normal nodal architecture and there seems to be a somewhat diffuse, perhaps vaguely nodular infiltrate of what seem from this power to be small lymphocytes. There's something else to observe under low power where there are areas of clearing. I don't think from this power one can necessarily appreciate what they are, but at first pass one might consider these to be tangible body macrophages, maybe suggestive of a more aggressive uh, uh, B-cell neoplasm. Under higher power, you'll see that these uh, macrophages, they are what appear from this um, elevation at least, to be singly distributed epithelioid histiocytes with quite impressive uh, pink cytoplasm. Under low power we can see the single uh, pink epithelioid histocytes but in addition a vessel that seems to be somewhat hyalinized and I think the presence of hyalinized vessels and singly distributed epithelioid histiocytes should make you think of a specific small B cell lymphoma subtype. So now under higher power there is a fairly monotonous uh, expansion of small mature appearing lymphocytes with variable degrees of nuclear membrane irregularity with the chromatin somewhat more dispersed than you might see in some of the background uh, lymphocytes. What's also an important facet to appreciate is the homogeneity of these cells without an obvious prominence of larger lymphoid cells. You expect to see such larger transformed cells say in the setting of small lymphocytic lymphoma and even follicular lymphoma and so this smells very much from a histologic point of view like mantle cell lymphoma and yet we know from the flow cytometry this was CD5 negative. So this under low power is a CD20 confirming what we essentially already knew that this is a B cell process. Just about all of the lymphocytes in this field are CD20 positive B cells. 
This next immunohistochemical stain is for CD3 to give us a sense obviously of the background T cells. CD5 stain shows uh, that the predominant population of cells here that are B cells do not co-express CD5 with CD5 expression restricted uh, to C cells. This is the immunohistochemical stain that clinched the diagnosis and confirms what we were thinking about histologically. Just about all of the B cells are expressing this antigen and as we go in under higher power this is staining the nucleus and this of course is cyclin D1 and despite the absence of CD5 expression confirmed by immunohistochemistry this is indeed classifiable as a mantle cell lymphoma not 100% of mantle cell lymphomas co-express CD5 and think, I think that's one important uh, instructive lesson from this case. We also performed immunohistochemistry with this stain. The previous cyclin D1 stain is obviously involved in cell cycle regulation. Other nuclear stains you should consider might be transcription factors and this is indeed a transcription factor and it's SOX11. SOX11 uh, is of particular value in cases of cyclin D1 negative mantle cell lymphoma. So we have learned that not all mantle cell lymphomas are CD5 positive and similarly as you know not all mantle cell lymphomas express cyclin D1 and it's in that setting that the expression of SOX11 can be particularly useful. But as people began to use SOX11 more frequently in the assessment of mantle cell lymphoma, another interesting outcome uh, appeared, and that is a subset of mantle cell lymphomas are actually SOX11 negative. Mantle cell lymphoma we need to diagnose, of course, to distinguish it from other small B cell lymphomas in that it tends to behave more aggressively. By contrast, those mantle cell lymphomas that are SOX11 negative tend to have a more indolent course. Not only that, they have other biological features, such as they are more likely to have transit of the germinal center, something we don't expect mantle cells to do. How do we know they've transited the germinal center? They display somatic hypermutation of their immunoglobulin genes, and just like in CLL, where somatic hypermutation of the immunoglobulin gene in CLL cells is a good prognosticator. It is also a good prognosticator in mantle cell lymphoma and is associated with the absence of SOX11 expression. So I think the most instructive uh, feature of this case of mantle cell lymphoma is that just because we did not find CD5 co-expression does not mean that one should automatically exclude consideration of neoplasms that are prototypically CD5 positive, such as mantle cell lymphoma. There were fairly compelling histologic features that pointed us into thinking about mantle cell lymphoma, the monotonity of the lymphocytes, the cytology of the lymphocytes, the singly distributed pink epithelioid histiocytes and the hyalinized vessels.